Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out some of the services that I've been running on my home lab for about the last year or so. First, what is a home lab? Well, for me specifically, it's this cabinet thing behind me, which houses a couple different mini PCs, a NAS, a Synology NAS, and some other little gizmos and gadgets that all work together to give me these services that I have on my home network. Now for you, it can be something as simple as a little Raspberry Pi or a full-fledged rack of servers hosting a ton of different services from home monitoring, security systems, whatever it may be. Now for me, even though this is a huge cabinet that's behind me, it's really not that complicated. There's only two systems, the Synology NAS and a mini PC that's running some of these services that you see on the screen now. I do have an empty computer case, rack mount computer case, that I'm gonna be using as a giant Proxmox server in the future. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about some of my future plans because some of the things I have set up are going to be changing eventually. And before we dive too far into this list of the services that I currently run, we're gonna to have to thank the sponsor of today's video, only Office. Now recently, Only Office has had a major update to version 7.1. I did a whole video covering all the new features and additions, including PDF integrations and better functionality within the Sheets and presentation applications. Now, Only Office is cross-platform. I have it right here running on Fedora. The Microsoft Office compatibility within Only Office is definitely one of the highlights of the software, and my primary use case for it is over here on my next cloud instance. And you can actually host OnlyOffice on your very own home lab or server in the cloud, wherever, just by going over to their website, clicking on run your own server. There are a few different options for enterprise developers and community. If you wanna get started for free, you could use community, get the Docker image, follow the instructions for Ubuntu, whatever it may be, and try out OnlyOffice today. Again, big thank you for OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. So back into the services that I currently run on my home lab. First things first, this dashboard that you're seeing is Heimdall. Now it is a very simple dashboard. There's not a whole bunch of configuration options, but I really like how easy it integrates with some of these applications to give you data within your dashboard, such as Jellyfin here. I have the amount of movies and episodes I have on my server. With a transmission, you can see, I can see the download speeds, leaching, seeding, Pi-hole, I can see the block queries and some other data. And depending on the services that you run, there will be more options for those integrated applications. So you get a really good rundown of what is going on on your home network. Now I'm gonna go kind of out of order here. The very first thing I'm gonna talk about is Yacht. Yacht is a wonderful service to easily go ahead and spin up Docker images. This I have running on the mini PC, which runs some of the services such as Jellyfin Heimdall itself, uh, transmission open VPN, some of the other things I'm going to be talking about. But this is really nice because actually spinning up Docker images is as easy as going over to templates, going to the self-hosted pro template and picking really whatever you want. If I wanted something like guacamole or even Homer, which is a, another kind of a static dashboard, you just hit deploy, run through the configuration options like you normally would with the Docker image. This just kind of walks you through the process and then it will spin it up. And then if I go over here to dashboard to something that's pre-existing, such as Heimdall here, you can see all the different links to the dashboards, what ports they're on, all the different variables and information, as well as our processes here. You have access to all the logs and then specific status for these individual Docker containers. And then you have the option to start, stop them, really whatever you want. Very nice way to manage Docker with a GUI. It's kind of like something similar to Rancher, but with a lot less features. And it works really good in just a uh, individual hosted environment. So with that, for now, I'm gonna be sticking with things that are on this mini PC. And the next and probably one of my favorite and must have of these is Jellyfin. I've been using Jellyfin for some time to host all my media throughout my home network, as well as sharing the media for some other people. I have this blurred out, but I have uh, my mom here. I have a separate account for children. And then we have my niece here. So if I just log into mine real quick, you could see what's going on. I got all my movies, got latest kids movies, latest movies and latest shows that I have on this server. And there's really a lot you can do with this. I'll have a uh, links to my full guides on how to set up Jellyfin. Those are the traditional install. This is set up through a Docker image using Yacht with some custom configuration. You could probably tell based on the dashboard here, we have over 3000 shows, 200 movies, 
and the hard drive on my home, I mean, on my mini PC is just about two, maybe 128 gigabytes. And what's really cool is I was able to link up my NAS as a folder within my home directory. So it will act as if the media is on that server when it's actually on the NAS. So if I do LS, for example, and I CD into media, you'll see I have kids and adults. If I go into adults and then CD into movies, you can see all the different movies that I have there. And even though it's showing up in my home directory, like I said, it's not actually there. If I did a uh, sudo nano etcfs tab right here, you can see how I have that linked up. This is the IP address for my NAS into the media directory, and I have it connected to my home brand and media and my credentials are saved in a specific file to easily and automatically log in. You could see where that's located just in the credentials, and you could see some of the variables I have attached to that to get it to work perfectly. The only real con to doing it that way is if my NAS powers down, I lose access to all my media, and if I have everything powered down, I need to make sure the NAS completely boots up first before I turn on the mini PC. Otherwise it won't boot because it's in there in the FS tab and it will just not continue with the booting process if it can't access all the data. And if you didn't know, Jellyfin is a free and open source uh, fork of NB. And personally, I like it a lot better than Plex because what you get is your media. You don't have a bunch of extra added crap from Plex. So with that, sticking with what is on the mini PC, here we have Transmission. Transmission is a BitTorrent client. You can see here I have Fedora Workstation and Neon Testing. I have both of those seating to kind of uh, share some of my bandwidth. And the really cool thing about this Docker image, basically everything here is Docker images. This Docker image also ships with OpenVPN, so I was able to log in with some uh, private internet access credentials. So this Docker image, this transmission client independently has its very own VPN, which for a uh, peer to peer sharing and downloading these uh, Linux ISOs is awesome because then other people won't be able to see your IP address. And it works pretty good. If I just want to add a torrent, I usually just paste in a URL here. And if I run over to Yacht real quick, this is how I installed this right here is transmission open VPN. Right now I have the source for the data in my uh, home directory, Brandon and downloads. And within the Docker image, it just shows up as data, but the uh, torrents we download are kind of mirrored between my home directory and the data directory within the Docker image. So if I delete an Linux ISO, for example, from my home directory, it will also delete it from the Docker image. So that is very nice. And then the last thing on this mini PC, we have Uptime Kuma. This is a really simple application. I just got rid of uh, Calibre, Calibre Web. Uh, I didn't really use it that much. It's a, a way to manage your uh, uh, eBooks and things like that. It is pretty good, but I didn't use it enough. But this will give me information on uptime for various services. So Synology NAS, you see it's at 95%. I did an update last night. So we can uh, probably go ahead and find where that downtime was if we wanted to. So if I go to 24, we see the little red line right there. So there it is. These are my, this is my specific downtime. So this is really nice to figure out when that was and to monitor it. And you can see it's just a TCP ping to the specific port that that NAS is on. And I actually did a video on Uptime Kuma for the Linode channel. So if you want a lot more details on this, you could go ahead and check that out. You can add new monitors real easy and there's a bunch of different types of monitors that you can add. You can really fill this up with whatever you would like. So now with that, we're going to talk about what is on the NAS. And there's really only two services on the NAS. We have the Synology products, which is the type of NAS it is. And we have Pi-hole running on the NAS as a Docker image. First, I'm going to jump into just Synology real quick. Sign in. And if I didn't have a Synology NAS, I'd probably be using something like True NAS. But Synology is really nice because of some of the like a mobile applications. So for example, Synology Photos here is just like Google Photos, except for I own the data on my server. So if I go to like mobile backup, this is all automatic Pixel 6 camera 2022. And if we go to five, you could see some of the latest pictures. I sold the truck, so that's the bulk of the pictures. But Synology Photos is awesome for uh, basically hosting your own photo backup solution. And of course, within Synology itself, it gives you kind of like a, a mobile, not mobile, a, a web-based operating system kind of layout. Up here are the applications. So I have Synology Drive, Synology Photos, and I have Docker here. So if I go into Docker, 
You can see right now the only active container that's running is Pi-hole. gives you some information. It's really easy to go and pull. If I look at all the different images, this is everything that I've tested out. I did have the uh, Jellyfin running on the NAS for a while, but I ended up moving it to the mini PC just so it would perform a little bit better. And that's the primary con of using like a pre-built NAS solution is generally you get really a really nice interface and uh, hardware to work with, but within the hardware, the uh, processor RAM and all that generally isn't the best. But other than the apps and Docker, it's really easy to manage. If I go into file station, for example, go into media, you kind of see the same layout we saw earlier. And if we go to like control panel, for example, shared folder, these are my shared folders. And it's really easy to uh, link up homes, for example, and share that with some of the file services such as SMB, FTP, really whatever you need. And what's real nice about this, for example, my wife has her own account, so she has her whole entire separate photo library backed up just as if she were to have her own like Google Drive or a Google Photos account. It's really handy. And if you'd like to see a review on the Synology NAS, I have a video for that as well. Now, last but not least, we have Piehole. This doesn't have very many logs because I actually just moved it over to the Docker image on the NAS, but you probably heard of Piehole. It is a fantastic application for uh, filtering out trackers, ads, things like that. I don't feel too bad using it because I have YouTube Premium and content creators get more money off of that than ads anyways. But you can see down here the various query types, all the logs, so like this is in the middle of the night, so there's really not much going on. And then it's picked up during the day as there's been more internet usage. You have our upstream servers, the uh, topped block domain, so appmeasurement.com, we have Google Ads, uh, double click, some analytics stuff. Top permitted domains is Google. One of the reasons I moved it over to this Docker image, I have all the devices connected to it on a device by device basis because my router is not very good. And it was having some issues with the uh, DHCP server stuff, so I had to go ahead and disable that for now. But this is the point where I'm gonna talk about some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing in the future. This right here, this is a Zima board. I'm gonna be doing a full dedicated video on this, as well as a couple different tutorials. What I can say now about this little board is I would highly recommend it. This right here you see plugged in has a little PCIe connector, so it is very expandable. This is a 250 gig uh, NVMe SSD, so you just plug that in. And before I set it up for what its final use is gonna be, I'm gonna do a couple tutorials on this, doing like pie hole, setting up a couple services on this, but the final use for this, which if I did my research correctly, I can use this as my modem, which is gonna be fantastic with a PF sense. It's compatible with the, um, whatever the configuration is that my piece of garbage CenturyLink modem over there uses. So I'm really excited to get this spun up. It has a Intel, Intel Celeron processor, which isn't like amazing, but it's definitely better than trying to run on some of the stuff on like a Raspberry Pi. And right there you see it has some uh, SATA ports so you can plug in some hard drives to it. I'll be doing a true NAS tutorial. Uh, with all that, subscribe, like this video if you did. Everything I mentioned, including guides and tutorials and all that will be linked down below. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.